right, hello everybody and thank you for tuning in today and for supporting VIMS and attending our very first virtual Marine Science Day supported by Dominion Energy. We are incredibly excited about this event because we have people tuned in from all over the world today. So my name is Caitlin Clark, I'm a graduate student at VIMS and I will be your host for this session. We are really excited to have both Associate Professor Christopher Hine and Assistant Director for Research and Advisory Services, Emily Hine, here with us to discuss their career paths and their role at BIM. So welcome, Christopher and Emily. Uh, Chris, if you wouldn't mind starting off with just a, an overview of kind of what, what your role is and what a typical day might look like for you. Sure. Yeah, so as, uh, as Caitlin said, I am a, an associate professor at BIMS, which means I'm faculty. I get the opportunity to conduct research, to teach students, uh, mostly graduate students at VIMS, but also quite a few undergraduates at William & Mary. I have a lab of, of um, I'd say I've got, I've got three graduate students and five undergraduates who are working in my lab at any time. And what we're doing is conducting research on coastal geology. So that's my focus uh, in science, is trying to understand beaches and barrier island and how they change with time, both and anything from when you go before and after a storm to the last 10,000 years. Um, so that is, um, yeah, that's, that's mostly what, what my job entails, is a lot of uh, research and teaching, all focused on the coast and how our beaches are changing. And awesome, thank you so much for that. And Emily, if you wouldn't mind uh, doing the same, just a little overview of, of your role at VIMS and what a day looks like for you. Sure, so my background is also in coastal geology and I work with Chris and others um, with some, doing some of the similar research, but most of my job is in what we call advisory service. Um, so that is taking my own knowledge of coastal geology and working with any other scientist at VIMS and all the other disciplines um, to answer questions that local, state, regional, federal, uh, policymakers and regulators ask um, on anything pertaining to marine science. So that could be how a proposed project might impact um, a marsh, to how um, you know pile driving might impact uh, fish species of concern. Awesome! Thank you both for for that intro to your work. So for both of you, what is the your favorite part of your job? What makes you excited to come to work every day? I can go first. Um, that's easy for me. It's, um, it's the, the thing I love the most and occasionally dislike the most is that I never know what the next email or phone call is going to be, what question I'm going to be asked, um, which is great. It means every day is different, which I suspect is something that a lot of people enjoy in our realm. Um, but it means that I get to dig my hands into all sorts of different different topics. You know, as a coastal geologist, I never thought I would have to know so much about submerged aquatic vegetation and anadromous fishes and anything in between. Yeah, for, uh, you know what? It's uh, funny. It's, it's the same thing for me. It's the, it's, every day is really different. Now, I'll go to work on, on a certain day. I'll say, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to sit at my computer and tap, tap, tap and write all day. I've got this great idea for science you know, a paper to write or, you know, work up data. And then things start blowing up. And that is actually great. And because I really enjoy that, you know, and, and things blowing up is not generally not literal in my lab, but is very likely to be, um, you know, that, that, oh, one of my students has a question about they're opening up a core, a sediment core that we took from a beach. And what does this mean? So I got to run down to the lab and go check that out and talk, talk through some science with them. And it's a constant, every day is constant discovery and learning more about the world around us and often in ways that we didn't see coming at the beginning of the day. And that's, that's what's really exciting for me. That's amazing, I love that. Um, I, this is a really interesting question. Someone asked for you both on your career paths, was it marine sciences to coastal geography, or sorry, coastal geology, or 
geology to coastal geology? Which came first for you and kind of your career path and how you got to where you are now? Yeah, for me, it was definitely uh, coastal geology. So more the geology end uh, to, to then focusing on coasts right from the get go. Um, and so then sort of branching out into more marine science after that um, geological focus. Yeah, uh, it, it's the same for me. I, I got into this because I was always very fascinated by the world around me. You know what? And not just, not fr frankly, not the living side of it, but the landscapes. I want to understand, you know, you go somewhere, be it a beach or be it the mountains. And I always was fascinated by, okay, why is that there? Why are these mountains here? And I realized that geology was a pathway, a way that I could learn about that. Um, and that's why in, in school, that was what I focused on uh, in high school, college. And then as I continued on in it, I realized, well, gee, those mountains got there. Yep, that took uh, hundreds of millions of years in some cases, certainly millions. And, uh, so, and then they're there. And over my lifetime, that's it. And what I really liked about coastal geology is that you never really get to go to the same beach twice. It's constantly changing. So you can watch it change. Coasts, beaches, barrier islands, tidal inlets, these are some of the most dynamic features on Earth. And you can actually watch that process of growth and formation and change in a day. And that is, is what eventually led me to studying the coast. It wasn't that I just want to be a beach bum. That didn't hurt. But it was that I really want to understand why that changed and be able to watch it. Well, just to add on to that, I do think it's kind of funny that Chris says, you know, in the geological world, we are very short time, you know, studying very short time timescales. Um, but at VIMS, we study some of the longest. <laughs> You know that that you know our field work typically doesn't matter if it's this year or next year or what season or whatnot. But you know you go down to you know the hatchery and things change hourly. Yeah, absolutely. The time scales on the different the different types of marine science are very broad, very wide, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and and with kind of your the field work aspects that you were mentioning, Chris, someone asked, what are some of the tools or cool pieces of equipment that you get to use in your work? Oh boy. Oh wow. That's a, that's a good one. We have a lot. So look, the, most of what I do is I dig holes, but they're just really glorified holes in the ground. That is, yeah, sometimes we'll go out there with a the shovel um, and dig up sand, but most of the time that doesn't get us deep enough. So my tools include um, it's what we call a fiber core system, which is where we take a hollow aluminum pipe strap on a to it a, a, a vibrating cylinder that's actually most people would use it for say uh, smoothing out cement put it up 30 feet in the air vertically and turn it on and what it will do is vibrate itself down into the ground and then we can cap it kind of your finger on the end of a straw cap it and pull it back up and keep all the sediments in it so we do that with the, this vibrating system and a tripod. But we also, if we want to go deeper than 30 feet, we go down to 80 or 100 feet, we have a drill rig for that. So this allows us to core down uh, into all of these coastal sands and muds that have been uh, left behind by, say, changing sea level over hundreds of thousands of years, uh, as long as hundreds of thousands of years, with a real focus on the last 10,000. Uh, we also, I guess, our other big tool that we use is called uh, ground penetrating radar. Sometimes you just don't want to dig the hole. You just want to know what's down there underneath the, uh, underneath the ground. So for that, what we use is a tool that sends out a radar signal into the subsurface. It bounces off different layers, comes back up, and we can map what's beneath our feet just using radar. And those, are the, those are the two primary tools. And then we get more creative with those. For example, we have a vessel out at our eastern shore lab in Wachapreg on the eastern shore that um, allows us to take those vibra cores through the middle of the boat. So we can do that. In fact, we were just uh, doing that a few days ago You could in, uh, in Assateague Island where we can go out and sink a core right down to the middle of the boat and pick, pull it back up. Also allows us to take our drill rig out to the remote barrier islands of Virginia. 
So we have some neat tools that we're able to do this all over the place with. That's really cool. Oh my gosh. It's funny. I always uh, walk past the uh, coastal geology trailer, so it's fun to know, uh, you know, what might be in there that, sometimes. That houses, yep, that houses Bruce, our drill rig. Awesome. Um, and along, so with the different cool gear and stuff, people are curious, how is the research funded and how difficult or time consuming is it to secure funding for your research? Um, spend most of my time trying to secure funding for the research, actually. That is a major component of our job. You know, the funding comes from various sources. Working in coastal geology, some of my questions are more basic about the uh, how the world changed, how the coast has changed, how barrier islands have changed. And for that, we go to places like NOAA or the National Science Foundation. But there are other components of what we do that are really focused on resilience of the coast and how it's going to be affected by sea level rise and climate change. And for that, there are other agencies, including the Commonwealth of Virginia that, that funds you know, the work we're just doing up in uh, Chincoteague and Assateague. So that's largely it. And yet it takes a long time to try to, 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 you know, try to take what we do, take our questions, take how we can, and think about how that benefits society as a whole and address that for these different agencies. It's a major component of, our, of my day-to-day -day world. And it's fun too, because I get to work with Emily on some of those projects also, because there's a lot in, you know, unlike a lot of geology, Coastal geology intersects clearly with advisory service and our um, and and you know the you know, people wanting to change shorelines or hardened shorelines. Well, that's that's my world as well. So that's where we get to bring our expertise together, including for some funding. Yeah, and and there's a question, Emily. How often do you spend your time in the office versus in the field? Kind of what does your breakdown of time look like? Um, that varies month to month. Um, so as far as in the field for research, that's a very small amount of my time. I think officially it's actually 5%. Um, you know, that varies. Um, but then for my job evaluating projects, um, a lot of what I do is for the Marine Resources Commission, you know, what they're asking what the marine um, environmental impacts of a, of a proposed project might be. And so I spent a lot of time driving all over the state anywhere that is uh, tidal. And so that could be tidal freshwater up in Fairfax and Alexandria, um, Back Bay down in Virginia Beach, um, to, you know, all of tidewater. Um, and so I, you know, to look at a, at a project on the site, you know, we can't really evaluate it unless we're actually there and can, can look at it and poke around. Um, so I spend Usually, well, when I can leave my house, uh, I would say anywhere from, well, no site visits in a week to four or five or six um, in various places. So I can I put a lot of miles on our state cars. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's great to great to know, kind of yeah, how how that time gets broken down, especially for people you know a, that are considering a career in this field. Um, and with that, you mentioned that when staying at home, um, someone asked, how is the current pandemic affecting field work and advisory services? Yeah, um, so right now, the uh, Marine Resources Commission in particular, um, you know, they're the ones who ask mo for most, we work clo most closely with, um, and they are not allowing their people to do site visits at this time. Um, at all. So that means that we have, you know, those site visits that we go on have, have drastically decreased <laughs> um, over the last couple months. There, I haven't been on any uh, since March. Um, but as we see things starting to open up, I suspect those will be carefully um, conducted, you know, sort of one person at a time instead of a meeting on site, that, that sort of thing. Um, and so instead, you know, some projects we can evaluate um, just from application materials and aerial photos and that sort of thing, but it's, it's rare. Those are, those are few and far between. Great. Well, thank you both so much for, for being here today. That brings us right to time. Um, so, so yeah, thank you for letting folks ask you about your career paths and your role at VIMS. This has been really amazing.
Uh, for everyone watching also, if you navigate back to the agenda page, you can access all of our other great virtual sessions and future interview panels. You can also browse through all the resources that are on the homepage for you. Thanks again to Dominion Energy for supporting this session. And just once again to our attendees, we can't wait to have you back on campus. But until then, we're really excited to have you here virtually with us. And I hope everyone has a really great day. <laughs>